Okay, we're talking about the psychological utility of religion. Can religion be useful? Irrespective of whether it's true or false, God or no God, can religion itself, Christianity in particular, can it be useful? Let's talk about the healing of the brokenhearted. Can religion be a powerful tool to bring healing to your soul? And then I'll tell you a story from my own life. Something I saw with my own eyes and you can decide it for yourself. Now, back in my old video, uh, I'll link it up. I told about, uh, I talked about someone who had been horribly abused as a child. Things that you wouldn't wish, things that you couldn't even imagine. Things you wouldn't wish upon your worst enemy. Having a hot poker held up to her face. Seven-year-old child. And just so everyone's clear who I'm talking about, I'm talking about my mother-in-law. So... I'll tell you a story she told me, and this is, keep in mind, this is just one story out of 50. I'll only give you one story just to paint the picture for you so you understand what type of psychological pain we're dealing with, what type of profound psychological anguish we are in fact dealing with. One story. Her mother was the one who was always jealous of her. The mother was the one who held the hot poker up to her face. The mother was the one who was locking her in closets and locking her in the, in the garage or the tool shed. So she had some form of love and some form of rapport established with her father because her father was relatively decent to her. And then one day they're all sitting around the table and the mother is, the mother is ranting at the father and badgering the father and telling the mother, would, you know, you should tear up the whole family. He's telling me, I can't handle her anymore. I can't handle her anymore. You need to deal with her. You need to deal with her. Seven, eight-year-old child sitting here listening to this, talking about her. Finally, the father explodes. I can't take her anymore either. Throws the kid up against the wall. Seven, eight-year-old child. Throws the kid up against the wall. Can you imagine? 72-year-old woman told me this story, weeping when she told it to me. 64 years had gone by and she was crying tears of anguish, weeping when she told me this story. Why? Because you never get over that. Her words... It was like I was a piece of garbage. Her words, promise, exactly, to the word. It's like I was a piece of garbage. Treated me like I was a piece of garbage. Wound like that goes so deep into your heart and it stays with you your entire life. Colors everything you do. There's no escaping it. Why? Because it lives deep inside of your heart. That type of hatred, that type of treatment lives deep inside of you and it starts to color you throughout your entire life. Fast forward to, to the relative present. Same human being, same person. We had moved her out to California. Brought her to church. Brought her to our church in Malibu. At one point we had a church in Malibu that was, you know, getting its act together, starting to become a really cool place. A healing place. And let me tell you what happened to that same person. Vulnerable, tormented, anguished human being. Filled with self-loathing. Goes to that church and one day they all pray over five, six people. And someone starts speaking to her. You know, I feel pain so deep inside of you. Lord, heal this person. Heal this beautiful child of you, God. I feel the pain so deep inside of her. Show her she is a precious child of God. Weeping. Same person, weeping, tears of joy, tears of gratitude, tears of healing. Saw it with my own eyes, promise you it happened. Just as I said. Well, that's not supernatural. Maybe not. Maybe God wasn't involved. There were certain, that's why I'm calling this series the psychological utility of religion. Because maybe there was no God involved in that. Maybe it was just the loving arms of a community, people willing to give themselves out for another human being. The key is, the key is, they started speaking things into her heart, healing, kind words, started speaking them deep, 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 deep into her heart to counteract the hatred that she'd been carrying around on the inside. That's the real crime of abuse. That's the real crime of being abused when you're seven, eight years old. That hatred come, starts growing inside of you. So you can't get it out. I would argue you can't get it out without God's help. 
but you're free to try. That's not really the point. The point is, I saw with my own eyes the psychological utility of religion. How a group of well-meaning Christians can actually do good and bring healing into another human being. Now, was she cured? No. No. Truth be told, she was a difficult person right up until the day she died. Extraordinarily difficult person. But she healed, and we restored her a little. Brought her back to life a little. When she was living in Connecticut, she was an alcoholic. She would have lasted two years. Consumed by self-loathing. Brought her to California. Started trying to take care of her. Bringing her to church. We brought her back to life a little. Restored her a little. All I'm trying to show you is that religion has value and meaning. That there is a psychological utility to religion that cannot be denied. If you have never seen it in real life, you have not been practicing at a church that, that, that practices Christianity correctly. Promise you. That's why I made the video about no true Scotsman. Because there are true Scotsmen and there are not true Scotsmen. There are people who bring people to church where they get healed of their broken hearts. And there are other churches where they judge and hate you and whatever. They don't do that. Because they need that. I don't know why they don't do it. That's all I'm saying for now. It's just a, just a, just the psychological utility of religion. That's all it's called. I saw with my own eyes, my own eyes, a vulnerable, hurting human being consumed by self-loathing, healed a tiny little bit. Yeah, you could just say it was because of the love of the community. That's fine. That's a good place to start, wouldn't you say? A loving community speaking speaking life into into their to their fellow human beings. That'd be a perfectly good religion to start trying to build, would would it not? It would ultimately look suspiciously like the Christianity as the Bible preaches it, but that's neither here nor there. Not saying that that was case closed, supernatural agency. Maybe no God required. Fine, maybe no God required. Only arguing for the psychological utility of religion. I'm only arguing that Christianity, religion in general, Christianity in particular, ben, is ultimately extraordinarily beneficial when it is practiced correctly. When it is a practice in a way that brings healing. And I have seen that with my own eyes. That is a story from my own life. Every word of it is true. That's all. Amen.